Hello everyone. It is Friday night for me. Probably at least Saturday, if not, who knows, five years from now. Whatever day it is for you guys, but I'm not staying up late to edit this video. So, it's at least a day ahead. Um, or behind, however that works. Anyway, so... My name's Pierre Dracula. I should probably say that in videos, but then I would kind of assume at this point anyone who sees my video is uh, actually subscribed to my channel. Uh, so, anyways, we are continuing on with our little pal Miles here. Um, and we're going to get into some paint pens. We're going to fill in his tie. Probably that'll be the first thing we do. Uh, go over the lettering again, and yeah, paint pens, I had an idea earlier, it might not work, but it's kind of playing off of this extra, um, well, what was technically a mistake, because I didn't paint exactly over the hot pink marker pen that I, um, used to uh, draw in the uh, lettering, but uh, we're going to make that into a feature and do some graffiti stuff and maybe some cartooning over top. I'm still kind of precious about his little face and uh, don't know how much I'll actually do uh, with paint pens over top of that, but uh, we'll see. And I also want to fix a little bit on his tail. Actually, I'm let me change the camera angle. Maybe that doesn't help much. Uh, it's evening, so I've got the overhead lights on, and I think they're causing a bit of glare in the camera. Maybe not. Uh, maybe that's just the viewfinder. Well, not viewfinder, but the little screen, monitor screen thingy. Because uh, when I zoomed in, I could see that, and when I zoomed out, it looks all blown out. So, I don't know. Some stuff I thought wasn't showing up uh, showed up just fine. But we're going to, anyways, point is we're going to get into some detailing. Uh, one thing before we start, I want to show a couple things. I mentioned about how I was doing some representational stuff before with adding um, drawings on paper and sticking them onto little canvases. So I've got a couple examples. This is his buddy Ricky. Uh, you know the old saying, you are what you eat? Well, Ricky likes doing shrooms a lot. He's not actually yellow, but uh, maybe the shroom he ate had a yellow base. So, um, let's see how much I can bring it close to the camera and still have it in focus. But that's an extra piece of paper, and it is stuck on with some sort of medium. Now, if I touch it, it feels dry, but I don't... I don't know if this sound um, picks up, but the little... You know, the... the uh, it's almost like a... I can't even describe it, but it's the sound of something kind of wet and sticky. You know what I mean? And um, wherever that gel medium is, and I don't remember at this point which kind it is, I don't know if that picked up in the microphone. That was a motorcyclist whizzing by. But it is, it feels dry to the touch, but also it feels slightly tacky. This was done last summer. Um, it's actually technically not finished, but I've started having concerns about the mediums. Um, now, I think what you can do, because on the one hand I've been told, oh, um, acrylic medium, especially gloss medium, and some of the gels, they never actually dry, they just form a skin, and then if they're thin enough, the skin is close enough that you don't get, like, issues, but that they're always kind of tacky, and it almost, I can sort of sense what that means. Um, I know you can put an isolation coat and then varnish over top, maybe that fixes it, I don't know, but I haven't... Uh, really messed with that and then there's there's also glitter embedded which is fun um, and then another version this is my other character Noah this is not finished but Noah in love with himself I meant to draw in a little mirror frame and never got around to it but this also very heavily um, especially on the mirror side because I put silver paint in uh, whatever medium so from some angles 
it looks opaque, mind you that's glare too, and some angles you can see right through it. But I had these sitting stacked on this um, desk for like an hour and when I picked them up it, I had to kind of like pry a little bit. So anyways, um, why do I mention that? Because I think I'm, in the last video or in the first one I talked about maybe putting some medium thinly to have almost like rays of glossiness coming off of Miles' face. Um, I'm kind of thinking against that. And actually, one thing I'm going to say, this is an acrylic painting, I've mentioned that before. I'm kind of, maybe I'm drinking the Kool-Aid, I don't know, but I know a few people who have been making the switch to oil and they love the feeling of it. I always never wanted to get into oil because I was concerned about like, A, you've got to have, you know, peace has to dry for so long. Where the hell do you put it? Especially if it's a bigger canvas and it, nothing can touch it. I think those concerns from what, you know, I was asking a friend of mine who does um, oil stuff and he was kind of saying, well, you know, it depends how thickly you paint. Obviously, if you're one of those guys who's like layering on the paint, like really thick and past, so it's like an inch off the canvas, you know, yeah, that's going to take possibly months to dry. But if I was painting something like this with thin layers, it would probably be dry fairly quickly. You know, obviously still a couple weeks, but, you know, so I'm start. I'm thinking, you know, I'm thinking. Um, and the other thing I was told is you can actually take a painting like this, do the base painting in acrylic, and then finish it off with oil on top. And that's also a good way because it, you know, obviously buying paint is not cheap, and some of us have a lot of paint that we've accumulated over the years, and you know. Should have used all of it up, but anyways, that's a slow process. But the idea is you start as per normal and then with your acrylics and then you just gradually start doing your top layer in oil. You buy a couple of colors at a time that you use a lot. And then just as you use up your acrylic, you don't replace it or you replace it with oil in the same color, right? Uh, so one tube at a time and then after a certain period of time, well, you're painting in oils. So that's something I'm kind of strongly thinking of leaning to. And of course, I do remember I, I took like one oil painting course a long, long time ago. But I remember us using some kind of um, a glazing medium. And that painting, because I never varnished it, it's actually my... I'm not going to go get it right now because it's in my dining room on the wall. But... Um, there's a sec little section, something like not about the size of the microphone, but it was like a car window or something. And I use this glazing liquid in oil that is super shiny, very dry, not sticky like this. Um, and the rest of it has this similar kind of matte finish, like an acrylic painting does. Although of course I say that right now it looks in the view f in the, um, little monitor flip around screen thingy in the camera, like this is all glare, um, even though obviously acrylic is matte. But um, anyway, so we'll see how that goes, <laughs> is what I'm saying, because this, I like the effect, but if I can do something similar with um, getting glossy effects in oil and they're not going to be... Again, I don't know, maybe I'm... I'm Maybe referencing a sound that I can hear very clearly. I don't know if the mic will pick it up, but it's almost like a squelchy kind of sound uh, where they're sticking together. And that's a concern from an archival perspective and all that. Not that I have like people lining up to collect my artwork at this point, but it would be nice down the road to be able to sell it and go like, yeah, and this is, it's actually done. It's not gonna be sticky, sticky, sticky or tacky. And then the other thing that I ran into um, with embedding, because I have somewhere I had like, um, I was putting like acrylic rhinestones, you know, like the kids plastic gem type things and gluing, not using glue, but actually using 
acrylic gel medium to stick them onto the canvas and then putting a layer on. So you would have like the hump of the rhinestone and then you'd have this like taper down of um, the medium. And some of those were like milky for like four months before they finally went totally clear. So that's a concern. And hey, if I'm whining about, you know, oh, oil paint takes forever to dry. Well, look what I was doing a few years ago with this sort of stuff. Um, as I mentioned in a previous video, like these are from last summer. Um, but before that, I it'd probably been a couple of years since I was painting because just because I was doing mostly printmaking and textiles and cartooning. But moving forward, I do want to be painting more. So anyways, that's a whole thing I'm mentioning that might affect future videos. But what are we doing today? I already said we're let's start with his tie. Right. Um, and speaking of noises that, well, I, I do know that the noise I'm about to reference did pick up in the camera, but when I was picking up that bag with the paints and that uh, rustling sound, I did actually take the time to get stuff into a plastic bin that I have on a seat next to me. So uh, we are not going to have that annoying noise today. Now. Part of me is thinking red and orange. And hey, if I hate it, if it looks bad, I let it dry and tomorrow I'll just paint them over in another color, right? So uh, let's do that. And um, who's red? I think this is opaque enough to go over the black, but I guess we'll find out in like two seconds, right? Uh, and this, the other thing I was looking, because I was thinking about using up, uh, starting to use up acrylics moving towards oils is, let's, Stevenson, I love them dearly, but they've been out of business for ages. Apparently they've been out of business for 15 years, but I have so much paint. And hey, as long as it's sealed, it, it doesn't go bad. Um, I was thinking, let's start with using up all the Stevenson's. Uh, because I, I don't know if other people do this too, or if it's just me being an idiot, but um, I have tended to end up with multiples of the same color. Like I have, somehow I have like four different ultramarine blues, and one of them is like a little tub, like from Chroma Colors, um, and then tubes and whatnot. Because obviously at some point I've been in the store and they've had a sale, and it's like, oh yeah, I need blue, and I just didn't remember what I had in stock. Um, so anyways, point is I have multiple multiples and I was like, it's time to start using some of this stuff up. So, on with the show, so to speak. Um, well, it's not super opaque, but I'm kind of digging that burgundy look that it's getting. And this is, uh, well, not that you can get it anymore because they're out of business, but it's Stevenson Rose Red. What are the pigments? Um, PR170 and PV19, uh, if you're curious about pigments. So, uh, Actually, that's kind of one of the other things that I've just, you know, I would always kind of be like looking at what the color on the tube was and going like, oh, I like that shade. I'm going to buy it. Now I'm kind of looking going like, is that a mixture or is it straight pigment? Even Hansa yellow is a mix or Hansa orange is a mixture where I'm just going like, you know what? I'm kind of done with uh, paying a stupid amount of paying money for somebody else's mixture. It's like, I'm going to be buying paints that are the straight pigment or um, just the one pi color pigments. And I will mix my own damn colors. And then I guess if, if it's a color I use a lot, I'm just going to have to be annoyed with having to mix it every time instead of having it ready made in the tube, but that's how it goes, right? So 
so far so good. I could probably stand to lighten that up a bit, but uh, I think we are good there. And I did say I wanted his the other stripes to have him to have some orange on his tie because of course he's going to have some orange on his tie. After all, he is dealing with a sort of people species that he wants to vote for him who are obsessed with cheese. And he wants them to think they're getting what they like. Even though Miles is very, very convinced that he knows better than they do what they actually need. Which is why he's running for office. Well, that and, you know, because you get paid, in his mind, for sitting on your butt, especially at the uh, city council level. It's like, well, you still run your own business. So obviously it doesn't take full, a full amount of time to be a city councillor. At least that's what Miles figures. Definitely going to have to brighten up that red a bit, I think, if I want it to stay red, because it is kind of... I mean, it it doesn't look as um, Halloween as one might think, but it is a little... So I think that needs to be a little wider, maybe. Funny, when I was a kid um, in the 80s, you still saw a lot of men wearing ties on a regular basis, not just like downtown, but you know, um, even out in the suburbs and whatnot, that was still kind of the uh, standard everyday piece of attire. And now it's kind of like, unless you're, you know, unless you're a lawyer or something like that, um, or businessmen, even now most businessmen, I mean, I guess uh, the whole Friday business casual thing has uh, become very predominant, so maybe in some very conservative fields you still get the uh, suit and tie, but it sort of seems like even lawyers will wear the suit and the shirt but unbuttoned at the top and no tie. And uh, maybe that's just because I live in kind of the sticks, so to speak. Um, but yeah, there's a whole thing one could discuss about uh, things people don't wear as much anymore. That would be regional too. Like, I've had this discussion with my best friend who, granted she's worked in corporate offices and I haven't, but... There is a period of a few years where I swear it's like I did not really see dresses in clothing stores for, you know, other than like the section for prom dresses or bridesmaid dresses, but like business dresses or sundresses or whatnot, it seemed for a while that they kind of went away and then they started making a comeback a few years ago. And this summer even, I would say I've seen more uh, women and girls wearing dresses just even like at the grocery store than I have in a long time. So it's nice to see that making a comeback, you know. And I mean, I've worn more dresses in the last year than I probably did for like 20 years. Um, granted that's because, you know, I got some place I got to be on well, I was going to say Sundays, but um, technically I go on the Saturday anticipatory. Um, but, yeah. Maybe it's just me, but it's like, oh, I'm going to throw on a dress if I'm going to go. Um, but anyways, um, it's kind of a nice change to see. That said, I've also seen, you know, I think I made a comment on... You know, wasn't actually in a Noah's Archipelago comic, but it was like in my, like, what I say when I post around it. 
made the comment about having been at Walmart um, the first weekend of um, August, which is a long weekend here in BC, or it happened, yeah, it is, um, pardon me, I was going to say, not necessarily, it depends when the Monday is, right, like it's the first Monday, I think, of August is BC Day holiday, so it kind of depends when the first was or whatever, sometimes you can have the weekend. Uh, what am I talking about? Um, never mind. If the Monday, if the first Monday is the holiday, then always the first weekend is. Because even if the Monday is the first of the month, anyway, never mind. I'm. But the point is that there's a big country music festival um, not far from where I live. Well, you know, 45 minute drive or whatever, but. Um, Anyways, the local Walmart was very uh, interesting visually to be walking around on that uh, Friday. I'm going like for my regular groceries. <laughs> and there's like a chick walking around in the um, produce section. She is wearing a very skimpy white fringed bikini. And when I say skimpy, I mean like when she turned around, you could see like it was crawling up the crack of her ass, so like her butt cheeks were hanging down. <laughs> and I'm like, do you not own a, like I didn't say anything, you know, it's not my business, but I was just like, could you like, if you're gonna be around other people's food, could you like maybe tie a sarong around your waist? It's like, I don't even care that her titties were flopping out, like whatever, but you know, your butt crack and you're leaning over the bananas, like it's, Put some, put something on your, cover your butt, you know? Um, anyways, uh, so that was entertaining. Um, and, um, you sort of look and go like, country has sure changed from when I was a kid. Like I grew up, my parents kind of liked country, but it was like the old seventies country. So I'd hear like, that, that El Paso song would be on, you know, the tape deck in my house when I was a little kid. And now I look around, and it's like, it's like the country festival, uh, visually it would appear that it's essentially a Motley Crue show, but with cowboy hats. <laughs> Actually, that's not true because when I last saw Motley Crue, the women were, uh, more covered up. Granted, it was also in November, so it was cold, you know, like, but... <laughs> And some girls were taking their tops off to flash their titties at uh, Tommy Lee. So, you know, because he was going around with, like, a camcorder at the front of the stage and, like, having the spotlight go all over the different areas. Uh, kind of like the way that... Uh, I mean, the viewfinder, it looks black and uh, red, but it's... Or black and orange, but it's definitely a little more red um, in person. So I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna give it another, uh, another little coat on, um, on the red and we'll see if that helps matters. And then when I break out the uh, paint pens, I can do some layering on that as though it's, you know, my, as if Miles is going a little extra. He's not just got a striped tie, it's like striped end swirls or something. Um, anyways, so, anyways, my point is, I was being, I was being snarky and judgmental about other people's fashion choices, which I did not say anything about in, in person. I was just like, hello, people of Walmart, is that website still around? It would be weird to take my phone out and take a photo. So, no, I did not take any photos, but I was just like, holy crap, I thought that was like a drunken, you know... I don't know, you know, the stereotype about certain parts of America. Uh, you know, if you go into the 24-hour Walmart at 3 a.m., apparently, I always thought that's when you saw the, uh, the uh, really questionable fashion choices, but apparently not. Uh, so, anyways. Yeah, that looks a little better. Um, Miles would have no objection, of course. Uh, to 
girls going around in bikinis, although he may say something uh, that would get him slapped. Um, but that would just be because he's being opportunistic. And his little buddy uh, Ricky, although I say little buddy, Ricky's bigger than Miles is because Ricky's a whole head taller than Miles. Um, because Ricky is the rat, but uh, Ricky would probably sneak glances, but would be very careful to not get caught, because, you know, he wouldn't want to upset his girlfriend baby. So, he wants baby to think that he only looks at her. I'm sure baby knows otherwise, but, you know, actually Ricky's pretty loyal. It's looking a little better. Let's zoom out for the full view. Yeah. It's funny. In the camera, it looks like the tie is like a foot f further forward. Um, so probably what I'll, I might do is well, let this dry. If I may build up another lighter layer to you know how the tie kind of does that from the side you know I'm like holding my hand the wrong way to the camera but you know because the tie has a little bit of a curve in it so you know in the center is going to be lighter on my uh, list for miles so we got oh yeah so the mic now that is a flat black and the camera it almost looks green but um, there's usually like a foam uh, sock they, I think they call it a sock but um, a foam thingy that's supposed to uh, cut out some of the you know, the sibilants and the plosives. I mean, it's not the same as a pop shield. Pop shield would be in front of that, and it's like, um, if you're doing it cheaply at home, you make it, make them out of pantyhose, but there's like metal ones that have like teeny holes drilled in them, or ones that are kind of like a, you know, there's various uh, versions of that pop. But of course, that, he's at a press conference, right? He's standing in front of a podium. So he's just gonna have the little foam sock thingy. And I think the easiest way to get that texture is just to take one of these stiff, uh, is it, hello, focus, maybe, um, stiff bristle brushes and like tap with, um, I don't want to do it in white because if you do it in white, <laughs> for anyone who's, um, ever dealt with a lot of like audio equipment, White is the color that microphone foam socks get if it's like the house mic at a bar and you get singers who are like right on the, 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 the you know, like some guys actually do that. I've seen some that were like disgusting and it's like there's like dried spit. <laughs> so it gets so gross because um, as you're talking, you, you know, especially if you're like practically deep throating the mic and some people do that, right? Um, so we don't want to really use white because now that's going to look kind of gross, but something that's like a, um, almost like a really deep blue and then gray. And then I have to look at the reference photo again, but you know, I want to give some indication of the fact that you've got the actual XLR cable coming out and going straight down. Um, cause the stand part, it would be metal. Uh, and the, um, and then it's like a rubber coating on the um, thing. Oh, here's something. 
Speaking of old paint, Triart. I think Triart, I think, still exists, but this, I've had this to a paint for ages. Let's see if I can unstick. Oh, wait, I, I was going to make a big production about, let's see if it unsticks, because sometimes they get the little ring of paint around and then they don't open, but that wouldn't open real easy. So this is Prussian blue. Well, it's not real Prussian blue, it's Prussian blue hue. So your pigments, PB15 and PV23. So it's blue and uh, purple mixed together so and this stuff is because uh, it's old you know some paints are runnier than others both in terms of brand and in terms of <sighs> this is funny let me see if I can get the freaking lid back on because um, uh, if I can't okay never mind um, Anyways, this is a bit of a tar-like um, paint. So let's get some stippling in. Because I also, I don't want it to actually like turn blue, but we're going to see. And I'm going to zoom y'all in. Like when I'm really close up, it oh even in the uh, viewfinder it looks like super blue. It in the in person it doesn't look as blue. I'll just look at my reference so I can see. Yeah, I don't want to go too far down because on uh, the reference the foamy thing is just sort of like in a. Only about halfway down. And if I was still doing audio stuff, I would try and figure out exactly what mic. Actually, if I was still doing audio stuff, I would be able to figure out exactly what mic that is. It's a weird looking one. Oh, and interesting. I'm realizing I did. I uh, drew this a little off. The actual reference photo, the uh, gooseneck mic comes down and then pumps out this way, so it follows the side of um, you know who's tie a little bit, but it has a curve, and then the cable is coming out that way and goes down. Or must it come down this way? But we're not going to change that because uh, I don't want to mess with it. But I will try and put some um, something in that makes it clear that these are that there is a cable as well as a um, as well as a what you call it uh, mic stand. So, and the, actually, you know, speaking of orange, whatever lighting they've got, the highlight in the reference photo is actually orange on both the uh, cable and on the mic stand. But I think that would be a little too much for here, but you know what I'm going to use? Indian red. Oops, I'm way too close. So. Um, just because that'll kind of give a little, um, a little 3D-ishness, very uh, technical term there, um, without being super, and the in red is just PR 101, which I think is just iron oxide. Um, I'm going to try and uh, get a little bit of a sheen. But it is kind of funny, all things considered, that uh, the reference photo of a certain American politician has an orange highlight on his microphone. And so we got... And do that. Just gonna kind of 
scrub in a little bit as this comes down. So just get the hint. Because, you know, some, some, some XL, this would be an XLR cable. Uh, some XLR cables, depending on what the coating is, some of them are um, very matte and they don't really reflect much light and some of them are really shiny. This one looks like, well, it's hard to say. It might, it might actually not be as shiny as, you know, but um, I just want to make it very subtle on the actual uh, cable. And then I kind of think I'm going to go more with a um, with a gray or like the faintest hint of silver on the mic on the actual gooseneck because that's going to read a little bit more like metal. I think I could be totally wrong, but uh, I almost want to say looking at that. Yeah, you don't need to see his face, but if you look really closely at that mic um, in the reference, that almost looks like the actual microphone base of it is like a midnight blue, in which case, um, I'm going to say it's uh, like there is a brand of microphones called blue. Um, I have, I have two of them actually. I've got a uh, one that plugs in either via USB to the computer directly to the computer or via XLR to Pro Tools. Um, that's kind of like midnight blue, but it's the big it's the uh, big ass one. My hands aren't even in here, but it's the one that it's the stereotypical first podcasting mic that people buy at like Best Buy. And then I have um, I don't think they make them anymore, but it's called the Blue Ball, and it's a big round. Um, it's a diaphragm mic similar to like an SM58, but it's freaking huge. Um, and that one I actually, uh, uh, the big blue ball I have had for like 15 years. I think I got it when I was in audio engineering school. Um, but uh, those really big blue balls. You know what they're great for? Actually, stick it in front of a bass amplifier, like to mic your bass signal and mix it with um, direct inject, um, and you get really freaking monster bass out of it. Um, but they also make a wide variety of Kodia mics and other shit. Uh, where am I? I am stolen, by the way, if you're wondering what, what I'm doing off mic. I am digging through my bin of paints because I know I threw a tube of silver in. Oh, finally! It's always the last thing you find, so this is actually golden, iridescent silver. Um, so we are going to... I don't want it to actually turn the mic stand silver. Um, so I'm actually going to mix it with, cut it with black. Um, this assumes that... I made the joke about um, the triart being um, not being able to get the lid off that one, but this might be no. Never mind. As soon as I start to say, "Oh, I can't get the lid off," I got that. I will say. I'm gonna show if I can find. This is an old um, golden tube. You can see, probably doesn't show up, but there's little tiny little grooves in it. This is a tube I bought a few weeks ago, golden as well. This does not rip the skin off of your thumb and forefinger when you're trying to get it off. This does. This isn't even the worst. Um, I might have like, uh, I don't have ones that are still like that, but um, back in high school, Grumbacker, um, and this I've had for a few years, but Grumbacker used to have one that actually had uh, scoops that came to sharp points all the way around. <sighs> I loved, I did like Grumbacker paint, but I hated the fucking lids. Pardon my language. I may bleep that. If I think about it when I'm editing it, I may bleep that. But, um, I, I lost skin from paint tubes that had lids like that. So why would you design them that way? And then if they get stuck, You'd have to use pliers to unstick them, right? Because if you tried to do this, and it had those sharp plastic points, you know, it would rip you open. So, I mean, I usually use 
paper towel around, but even sometimes using paper towel with those lids, like they would, it would cut through. So you end up using pliers and then it would flatten some of the th some of the things, but then you couldn't get a grip on it. Anyway, anyways, the whole discussion about the ergonomics of like paint tube lids is like something I could nerd out that probably nobody other than me wants to hear about. So oh, where's my reference? Stand goes down here. This may not even show at all. I don't think that does show at all. I have a good metal gray type of thing. Okay, well that's a good data point then. We will just use it straight out of the tube and not mix with black. Watch me watch this video back and go, oh, it totally shows. What was I saying about paint tubes? Well, I mean, I think um, gold is still metal paint tube, but uh... zoom in. I mean, in the viewfinder, that definitely looks better. It's not super distinct, but you also don't really want it to be too distinct. Uh, like even that's probably a little too much. It definitely looks too, like too much. Is there a paint plane going by? It's, it is after dark. Um, anyways, I think I'm gonna go in and lighten up that Prussian blue just a touch, just to put like a little central highlight down. Um, so then I need a teensy, teensy bit of light. literally just touching the end of the tube to that. I'm picking up a little bit of black as well. get too bogged down in like hyper realism because if we were hyper realistic I don't know when the last time you had a, uh, one of your local mice run for uh, city council you know what I mean so oh yeah well we're messing with this I do need to kind of 
almost doesn't show up anymore, but there is a teeny line of the grid there that's left, and that is kind of annoying me. Um, that's kind of a shadow color. Now, my standard, you know, my standard magic formula for whitey skin tone is, um, let's say 50% white to 35% yellow ochre and the rest, um, some sort of a red ochre, whether it's like, oh, I mean, for this case, I'm just going to use Indian red because that is, um, that is iron oxide red, but, um, then you can, um, uh, tweak from there. So like when we have like that highlight, that's a reflection sort of meant to be a reflection, although the flag would be like two feet behind him, but you know, let's assume that there's other flags off, you know, that way. So, um, he's getting orange reflected on his face from that, uh, from those flags. So, um, some people, you know, especially those of us who are, um, Celtic or have significant Celtic ancestry, um, we would probably have a little bit, you know, we would be more on the 15% of the, uh, reddish iron oxide, uh, versus the yellow ochre and, oh, other people who, um, don't look perpetually sunburned, uh, would be a little less. Um, but yeah, so, let me see what... Why don't I aim this down at my palette so you can see what I am mixing. Right now it looks gross, but we will start to get in. Uh, well, this is actually, I probably have not enough white in it, but for where it's going, like that, that tan color, It might not have been the uh, the right reddish iron oxide. I might not have used the quote unquote Indian red. I might have used. I think there's another one by Stevenson called light red, because uh, that is definitely. Let's take that back up to here. Actually, it's not. It's not too terrible for where it's going, because it's kind of a bit of a sallow shadow, his face. But I will have to brighten it up when I mess with his tail in a minute. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna use a teeny tiny brush because we don't need much paint. We're not screwing with his face too much. But I just want to knock. really mess with too much. I think I kind of want to leave it as it is, other than I might take, I might soften this a little bit. Just so it doesn't look so much like a hard outline. I say that, and one of the ideas that I have for the paint pens is to add some outlines, but This is a little more. Tan. What I might do actually is come in with a like the light yellow and just kind of knock that line out. Well, let's see, because I kind of he does kind of have fat cheeks. Am I about to regret what I'm doing? Eh. 
yeah, that's definitely not the right color, but we will thin him. We will thin his little cheeks out with the uh, flag colors. So the other area I want to mess with is right in there. Because that is, I think you want to have a little bit of a shadow on the edge of his tail. Sometimes the wall hanging has been in uh, more in focus than this. Now what I'm going to add is take a tiny bit of the red from earlier, or a lot because, you know, who cares at this point. And I need a little bit more white because I want to lighten him up in that area because it looks like he's got a dent in his tail, to my eyes anyways. Or it makes it look like the tail is like almost sharp when it should be more gently rounded. So let's here, yeah, that's already so much better. because when I look at that color on the palette it looks totally wrong but it's pretty good on the actual on the little dude himself so maybe I'm gonna come back up to his little face and this is how where you got to be careful that you don't rework things too much still got a bit of an outline. The only thing is I think I might take out this uh, reflection because it kind of looks like his face has a hole in it and it's showing th that through as opposed to a reflection. I can always kind of add some back in if I need to. In person that looks better, on the viewfinder it looks weird, so I don't know. Um, I may still tidy it up to smooth it out. It kind of it works that he has fat cheeks actually, so you know. Um, what I probably need to do is put the uh, shadows in under those whiskers again. Because um, right now they kind of, I lost the teensy weensy little shadow. Um, for the shadow I'm just going to take some of that. Here I'm using just Indian red straight. 
just gonna cut. Again, I don't know how much that detail shows up. The other thing, I've been debating this the last couple days, so his ears. So, and let me just raise the camera up instead of at an upward angle. Excuse the creaking of the chair. And that this is about to get shaky because I'm gonna mess with the tripod. So what I've been kind of thinking about is when you see actual mouse ears, uh, maybe I can do this better with a, a paper, but they have um, actual mice, of course, so very thin. They don't have like a rolled it. Why don't I just draw what I'm trying to explain? That'll make it easier, right? Right. I'm a little concerned, basically, that the way I've shaded this, it matches with what I cartoon. Like, I cartoon the ears kind of like that, you know, with the hair here and all that, right? I'm concerned that that makes, in when it's cartoon, I think that works. In this, I'm a little concerned that it makes it look like the edges of his ears are um, like if that was a cross section where you had like a rounded whatever except that actually actual mouse ears as near as I can tell from photos that would be the cross section that they're very thin right and they don't have like a weird bulging thing so I may blend out, blend this out just a little, or at least soften it so it doesn't look like there's that hard line. Um, so let's zoom in while I do that. And if I hate it, I'll have to fix it tomorrow. <sighs> And the other thing, of course, is um, here's an interesting fact about rat and mouse ears, uh, which I didn't know. Um, okay, see that? I am adding a lot more pink to the skin color that I have mixed here, which is on the palette looks like. Um, I'll say cotton candy, <laughs> but uh, we'll try and blend it in. But anyway, so the thing with uh, mouse ears apparently is, yeah, they have pink ears unless they're upset or frightened by something. Then they, you know, the little blood vessels contract and they don't have as much airflow. So they're, um, if you see a mouse or a rat, where and the ears look very white, then they're uh, stressed, angry, or upset, or something. Um, I don't even know how much. Visually, I can tell that's better in person. I don't know how much it actually shows in the camera. But we'll also deepen the shadow a little bit here and a little bit closer to his head. But uh, if a mouse is happy, they relax, the blood vessels dilate a little more, and then their ears get really pink. So, so Miles here, yeah, that looks a lot better, a lot softer. Miles here has kind of moderately pink ears. 
So, you know, he's kind of happy, but he's kind of uh, possibly annoyed. Let's see. Oh, whoops, sorry, I was working on the ear that's not in focus right now. Let's, let's get this one matching a little bit. This shade wants to almost go very brown, very dark, but this will be the darkest part of his little ears, closest to his head, right? And his ears, I think, are lopsided, like that one. I wonder, they're the same width, but that one's taller. Oh well. think. <laughs> yeah, things are looking kind of bluish in the uh, camera maybe. I think that's just the viewfinder. Uh, otherwise I guess I'll have some color correction to do or I'll just put a sorry about the uh, inaccurate color. Um, what else is on the list? So we got his tie, we got his mic, we got his ears and his tail all kind of sorted out. lettering because the grid busting I did yesterday seems to have worked I'm not seeing any well okay pardon me I, I lied there's one spot down here where I can definitely see that freaking grid um, but for the most part the grid is gone even there, I don't know that I can really tell that it's part of a grid. We may be able to hide that. Anyways, so let's go over his letters. Actually, let me see if I can figure out how long this video has been. Actually, I think we've probably hit a long enough video for today. Um, cause I think we've been going over an hour. Maybe I'm reading the camera... My uh, camcorder, it shows like an elap or time remaining on the hard drive. So I may be reading it wrong, but I think we will maybe call it a day. Let me just move the camera back so we can get them all in focus. So that's the progress for today. Uh, if I come back and, well, I will work on them again tomorrow. Um, so in the next video we will mess with the lettering and then we will get into the paint pens. And here I had gone through my little container of paint pens. I had a whole bunch that still had plastic on them because I kind of used the same colors all the time and not so much the rest of the set. And I took all the plastic off going, that would be annoying for people to have to sit through or for me to have to go and edit out. <laughs> Let me do that before I turn the camera on and we're not even using them today. Uh, and there is a, I don't know if you've been hearing him, there is a fly in this room fly, doing circles. So if you've been hearing a weird buzzing noise, I tried to kick them out. They don't seem to understand the concept of open doors. <laughs> so anyways, I guess I will find that fly dead on my windowsill at some point. Um, along with his buddies. So anyways, we still do a little more tweaking on 
his suit at some point over the weekend. We will mess with the lettering and we will um, see if I get uh, get nervy enough to start doing cartooning over top. I think it'll look cool. I could be totally wrong. Actually, one thing I might try, I have some mylar sheets or like, actually I won't use my good mylar because it was more expensive, but you know those uh, sheet protectors that you put in binders and stick things into? I might take some colored Sharpies, hold those up, do some drawing on it and see if I like the look because then if I don't, I pull it away and nothing has been drawn on the actual painting. Uh, so that's what will be going on in uh, some future videos, but uh, still got a few days till the deadline for Cowichan Exhibition, which is, I'm kind of going like I want to put this guy in. If it, if I don't finish him in time, whatever, like this guy is staying in my house, so <laughs> it's a painting for myself, so I'm not too concerned, but anyways, hope you've enjoyed this uh, kind of rambling paint with me. Uh, working on our buddy Miles, and uh, catch you next time. Bye.